Hi, this is Professor Fernandez, and in this video, we are going to talk about adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions. So let's look at these two examples here. These come from Calculus Simplified. This is example A1, so that's in the appendix, the first example. So it says add and subtract the rational numbers 1 half and 3 sevenths. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. So there are various ways that you can think about doing this, but the easiest thing to do is to find a common denominator. And the easiest way to do that is to just multiply the two denominators together. So let's do the addition first here. So if we just multiply 2 and 7, we get 14. Then the next thing you want to do, you might have been taught the cross multiplying trick. That is certainly something we can do. But the idea is that you now want to find a way to convert 1 half and 3 sevenths to a denominator of 14. So 1 half, to convert that to a denominator of 14, we can think of dividing 14 by 2 to get 7. So really what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both the denominator and the numerator by 7. That's multiplying by 1, doesn't change the fraction. So if I carry out the multiplication in the denominator, I get 14. That's what I wanted. The numerator, I get 7. Okay, so I would put that 7 up here. That is the first thing that I'm going to add for the new fraction. So I do this process all over again now with the 3 7 I want to convert that to a denominator of 14. So if I divide 14 into 7, I get 2. So I'm going to multiply the 7 by 2, multiply the 3 by 2. Again, that's like multiplying by 1, doesn't change the fraction. But if I multiply across now, I get 3 times 2, that's 6. So that is the number that goes up here. And then really easy part here is you just keep the sign. So we were adding the two fractions, so now we're adding the two uh, numbers we have in the numerator. So we get 13 divided by 14, and that is our sum of 1 half and 3 sevenths. Great, so let me do this again a little bit faster now that we know where this next trick I'm going to teach you comes from. So you might have learned the multiplying, um, uh, the cross multiplying trick. So the way you do this is you would start with 7, you would multiply it against the number here, 7 times 1, that's 7. And then you start with 2, and then you multiply it with the number here, that's the cross multiplication. 2 times 3 is 6. And then again, you keep the original operation. So we do that, that gives us 13 over 14, which is the same answer that we got before over here. Great, so then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract these two uh, rational numbers. So let's erase all of this and give ourselves some space here for subtracting these two. And then we'll do things a little faster now, because we know how to do this um, at least two ways. So if I have 1 half minus 3 sevenths. So same thing again, I'm going to suggest that you just multiply the denominators together to get the common denominator. There are faster ways to do this that would, you know, build in simplifications at the end, but, you know, we don't need to go there. Uh, and now I'm going to do the same multiplication process, the cross multiplication. So I get the same numbers, 1 times 7, that's 7, and 2 times 3, that's 6. But then now the sign is different. I'm subtracting, so I put that in there. So I get 7 minus 6, that's 1. So my answer is 1 over 14. OK, so you might be wondering what happens if, for example, I had a, uh, you know, I don't know, a negative 2 up here, right? So what if I was subtracting 1 half and negative 2 sevenths? So the process would be exactly the same. So the first step here doesn't change. 7 times 1 is 7. The second step here also doesn't change. Now I'm multiplying 2 times negative 2. So that would be negative 4. And then if I keep the sign again, then I'm going to express it this way. So 7 minus negative 4, that's 7 plus 4 over 14. So that would be 11 over 14. That should make sense, because if I remove the clutter over here, right, we were originally subtracting a negative number. So we should have ended up adding, which is what we did. So nothing really changes if you have uh, numerators that have negative numbers in them. Okay, and so to wrap this up, let's do this second example here. So what if I want to multiply and divide these rational numbers? Well, the multiplication part is pretty straightforward. So multiplication, as we kind of just used above, is multiplying the numerators together. I get 3, multiplying the denominators together. I get 14, and that's it. Um, I might want to simplify if there are any factors that each uh, number in the numerator, denominator have in common. 
but um, that's not always a requirement. So this is where we'll stop. And how about dividing? So to divide fractions, one half divided by three sevenths, for example, what I do is think of what this would be like. It'd be one half divided by three sevenths. Okay. So I convert the division into a multiplication by the reciprocal of the denominator. Okay. And this might feel a little strange, but you know, this is what you do all the time anyway. If I say four divided by two, what I'm really doing is four divided by two, which is nothing other than four times one half, right? So if I compare this number and this number, and I look at the operations and I st stand back and ask what happened here, I was dividing the number and here I'm multiplying by the reciprocal of the number. So that's exactly what happened over here. Here I'm dividing by this number, so I end up multiplying by its reciprocal. By the way, reciprocal means you swap the numerator and denominator. So then I'm, I'm back to multiplying fractions, which is what we just did. So I literally just multiply the numerators, I get seven, multiply the denominators, I get six. That's my product. Okay, so this has been everything to do with numbers, right? So what if I did an example now with um, variables? So let's just look at how uh, that would work, see if anything changes. Let's take x over y and y over x, right? So let's say we wanted to add them. So the exact same rules we just talked about apply. So what I would do here is multiply the denominators. I would get yx and then do the same cross multiplication as before. So the x times x gives me x squared. The y times y gives me y squared. And then I keep the sign, I add them, and that is my answer. Just like it happens with the numbers, you know, you can potentially simplify this. You might be able to cancel out X's or Y's. In this case, um, we really can't. But the illustration here was to show you that the same operations for numbers work for variables as well. So how about um, dividing, right? So what if I'm dividing X over Y and Y over X? Similar thing here. So if I do uh, X over Y divided by Y over X, I am multiplying by the reciprocal. And then same rules of operations. So if I multiply these two fractions together, I multiply the denominators together, multiply the numerators together, and that is my result. Um, so this video was intended to show you that not only are the rules for the arithmetics of, of fractions, you know, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, things that um, we can do fairly easily, and, and there's shortcuts like the cross multiplication method, but they also carry over into the algebraic um, operations. Great. See you in the next video.